Hey guys, this is the Duda 2, and uh, I'm gonna do uh, finally my video on um, creating your own Gobon, which is a Japanese term for Go board. Um, I want to apologize for the lapse in videos. Uh, first, I had uh, Windows 8 upgrade problems, then I had um, uh, sound issues, and then I had camcorder problems. Well, my wife just bought a really sweet um, digital camera that takes uh, video. So I'm um, trying that out today. I hope uh, hope you guys like it. Um, what you see in front of you is a bunch of tools that you may need to make your own uh, Gobon. Now I've made a couple on my own. This one I want to try to make uh, a really high quality one as opposed to my other ones which are of medium to lower quality. Uh, mostly because I started a Go Club and I wanted uh, a bunch of boards fast, you know, so um, you know, that's, that's why they're not the highest quality. But I'm going to do uh, a couple videos in succession and um, hopefully cover everything, all the questions people have. Um, let me make it clear, I'm not a, a woodworker, I'm not a carpenter or anything like that. Um, so I'm sure uh, there are people out there who could do this stuff way, way better than me. Okay, so all the more reason for a video because I think a lot of you guys out there aren't necessarily really good uh, working with uh, different type of wood materials and such. So uh, I just represent the average Joe. Okay, um, what you will need. Okay, first you're going to need some type of saw, preferably a circular table saw, so that you can cut nice straight lines down the edge of whatever uh, type of lumber you choose to do. Um, if you want to know the dimensions, you can type in Sensei's library on Google, and it'll give you the dimensions of the different types of boards and even the different types of lines. If you want to be specific, um, I have a cheat way. Uh, basically, what I do is I take an official go board and I set it over the piece of wood and I trace it and then I uh, saw it on the line and so I know I get the right size because I, I just kind of cheated. Um, other things you're going to need is you're going to need uh, magic markers both a extra fine and a fine point. You're going to need some pencils uh, and make sure that your pencils have a good uh, pencil eraser. Uh, some erasers are just junk so you need to be sure you got a good eraser also. Um, I bought a paint marker. I'm going to be uh, experimenting with that see how that works as opposed to a regular uh, magic marker, a sharpie. Um, you're going to want, uh, if you don't like the color of the wood that you chose, uh, no worries. Uh, you could buy stain. Um, I have a Colonial Maple 223 wood finish here that we just kind of had laying around the house. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice looking color. So I think it'll, it'll look nice for a go board. Um, you're going to need a square. Um, and basically what this does is this is going to keep your lines nice and straight. And um, also it's going to make it easy for you to mark out your... Um, you know, mark out your lines properly. Um, I, I say need it. I guess you don't really need it. It's just it's a tool that's going to make your life easier. But what you do need is some type of ruler. Um, I got this long metal ruler. I also have a shorter wood ruler laying around here somewhere. I couldn't find it, so I'm off to a great start already, right? But uh, you want these small markings. Um, so when you set it down, you won't have. You know, you can be pretty specific uh, with your markings like that. Um, another thing I, I bought is a wood burner. Um, I had a little bit of luck using a wood burner on my other board. Um, the wood burner comes with different tips, and it's going to come with... Uh, well, my wife heard me upstairs and brought the wooden ruler. How about that? So that's, that's this one. Um, as I was saying before, it comes with different tips, so um, you can figure out what tip you like. I'm guessing for thicker lines, thinner lines. Um, so that's something else uh, we're going to be messing around with uh, as I go through this, this series. Um, and the other thing I'd, I'd like to talk about uh, before I show you my couple examples and end the video, give you guys, a, a, you know, let you guys get your materials and get ready for the next video. 
Um, the other thing I want to talk about is if you want to um, use a specific type of wood but you can't find it in a solid chunk, um, you want to buy small pieces and glue them together if you wanted to do that. Um, this, for example, has, um, let's see if you can see here, yeah, see how uh, this is a couple of different pieces of wood all glued together. Uh, it's very nice. Obviously, what you want, ideally, is one solid piece, but um, you can't always get that. So, um, if you wanted to do this yourself, all you need to do is uh, get your wood pieces. Um, you want to get what's called a pipe clamp. Uh, it's a big clamp that pushes these pieces together. Get yourself some wood glue. Um, drill some holes in between like this and uh, fill the holes with a uh, dowel rod and glue them. And then you're going to glue all the way down. And you're going to wood clamp them. Let it sit a couple days. And then you're going to sand it. And uh, this is kind of what you got. Um, another good idea is um, what I did with this. This is a, a cheap IKEA table. Um, it's, this was much bigger. Uh, so what I did was I found the center of it and I, I cut it out of the center using the circular saw. Um, I, I like the wood, I like the way it looks and it seems, uh, I mean, it's, it's level. And another thing I like about it is it's, it's real wood, it's not laminated. Um, my wife likes IKEA, I'm not a big fan. But uh, we went there and in the discount section there was this table stand for like 30 bucks. It was this huge table stand and we used it for years. So um, took it home, used it, and she was ready to get rid of it. So I'm like, yes. So I just chopped this out. So this is the wood I'm going to use. Now, this wood does have some issues. Um, letting you guys kind of see what I'm working with here. Uh, at the bottom of the table, it was braced with these metal braces. Um, so you can see this is actually cut out of the wood and there were metal braces here. Um, so I, and all the more reason to make sure that I cut exactly in the center so that I don't have these off-center lines. If anything, I figure it might help the acoustics of the board a little bit. Uh, it's not really a big deal. Um, but it is uh, an issue for some people. So you want to, if you're going to, you know, chop it out of a piece of furniture, make sure there's not any type of uh, bracing or anything like this. Um, a lot of people worry about um, issues with uh, the different, uh, you know, a bunch of different pieces of wood, uh, if it's going to warp or crack or whatever. Um, I, I don't see an issue uh, with it if it's done properly. The hard part is doing it properly, but Ikea did it for me. So, uh, you know, not a big deal there. So this is the wood I'm going to be working, working with. Um, it's about, uh, about a little, little under an inch and a half thick. So um, I figure it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a nice heavy piece of wood. Um, I don't believe there's any type of laminate on it, but we'll find out. It doesn't look like it. Looks like it's just stained and polished. Um, I'll just uh, go over briefly the other boards that I have made, the medium uh, quality ones. Um, for a for a uh, nine by nine board, I grabbed a, a piece of uh, thick pine from Home Depot, um, and they actually sell it sell it like this. You could probably get it in one huge piece if you want. Uh, I think it's like a I don't know like an 8x1 or something like that. I'm sure you can get them. But uh, that's what I did and basically what I did was I measured it out and I magic markered it. Uh, you know, simple. Uh, it's not, not a bad board and it actually pine makes a really nice sound. It's, it's not the most durable or attractive wood but it makes a, it makes a nice sound when you put a ghost stone on it. Um, for a 13x13 13 13 board I did the same thing. Um, grabbed the piece of uh, a large piece of pine and just chopped out the size that I wanted. And um, for these holes, I just uh, you, you could either uh, take like a drill gauge that has a bunch of different hole sizes, find the one you want, and drip your magic marker in it. Um, really, I just kind of colored them in. Uh, it looks nice, and there's a deformity in the board. Uh, it's kind of warped a little. You can see how it's, it's kind of bowed, but actually I found that that bow just amplifies the sound. So again, um, 
you know, you could be a little creative and you could use your imagination and um, not all boards have to be, you know, like the perfect Japanese style. Uh, a lot of us are Americans and uh, America is known as like a pragmatic country, you know, making things work uh, their own way. So, uh, you know, if, if you're not looking for the traditional uh, boards, uh, maybe uh, get a board that's nice and flat on the sides but has a little hump in it. Um, the Koreans, for instance, uh, they've been known to add things under the boards to uh, increase the, you know, the beauty of the sound, you know, adding metal bars and chimes and such. So uh, I don't think too many people would have a problem with this. Um, again, it's, it was an accident. I can't take credit for it, but uh, it sounds really good. Um, here is uh, my first experimentation with trying to be fancy. Uh, this is, uh, I think I explained this before in one of my other videos, I was driving down the street and I found an old, like 1950s looking dresser and it was heavy, so I threw it in the back of my truck and I uh, brought it home and uh, I just bought the wood burner so I wanted to try it. Um, the problem with this piece of wood is that it's laminate, uh, it's real wood and they put a piece of lamination. You know right up top so there's laminate up top and laminate on the bottom and I didn't know that I figured it was so heavy there's no way there's anything laminate but it was and so the wood burning actually smoked and just stunk to high heck so uh, something else to consider you want your wood burning to burn on wood it's not really made to burn on laminate um, but it's a good heavy piece of wood and I was able to carve out some designs to kind of fix my mistakes um, you can see the, the problem with wood burning is that some lines are thicker than others, but all in all, I mean, it's a beautiful looking board. Um, so I, I wouldn't call it a failure, so, um, but I had to make it the, the real small Japanese style lines, which are smaller than the, the Chinese style lines are wider, um, because the board turned out to be so small. Um, and then here's one I did that I think uh, turned out really good. I would pay money for this. Um, this is my, um, this, this wood is Aspen. Um, I bought it at Lowe's or Home Depot. Can't remember which one. I was looking and there's wood paneling for walls. It was twice as thick. So I was able to get two boards out of it. I just sawed it in half and it fit. Um, Aspen wood, I, I don't know much about it. Uh, there's nothing on it uh, since these library. I'm guessing it's another name for another type of wood. If there's any carpenter people out there, feel free to tell me. Um, but uh, it's in many pieces. But it's a beautiful color, it's a little light. Uh, I think this would be a perfect wood for staining. And it's very strong, and it's pretty heavy. Uh, so, um, it's just another example of, uh, you know, what you can do with, with just finding wood at your local lumber store. Um, I, th I think this will be an intro video. These are boards that I've done before. Um, this is a board I'm going to mess with. In the future, I'm going to step by step it. But basically, as you can see, what I did with all these boards is I simply um, measured. Okay, uh, just put your get yourself a, an official board right here. I'll show you exactly what I did. Uh, this board is my Yellow Mountain Imports board. I got it from YMI and. I wanted to know what size to cut this, so I went here, lined it up, and chopped it, you know, drew the line and chopped it so it's the perfect size, uh, it's the official size of a Chinese board. So I'm going to make the Chinese line so it can play both single and double convicts, but that's, that's what I did. So um, that's how I come across the size. If you have any questions, comments, uh, feel free to shoot me a you know, shoot me a comment on YouTube or an email. Um, you guys are coming up with great questions. And I, I can tell a lot of you guys are kind of impatient for me to get these videos out. So, um, this will be kind of a list of materials video. I won't go in how to cut the boards, because there are many methods of that. And um, I, I probably did it all jacked up. But I think most of you guys kind of know that. If you want to get dimensions, remember Sensei's library. Type it in Google. And there's all kinds of Go information on there. I'm sure if you're watching these videos, then you probably know about Sensei's library. If not, check it out. You'll, you'll love me for it. 
Um, next video I'm going to go over the layout, um, show you how to uh, divide the lines, or how I divide the lines, and um, a couple different methods for doing that. And I think that's about it. Um, now that I got uh, this cam, cam or camcorder thing working, the video should be pretty regular. And I got a couple good ideas for videos after I uh, make this go by. Alright guys, that's about it. Hopefully I can figure out how to shut this off. Thank you very much and I'll see you next video.